You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, welcome. We'll call the July 18, 2018 Board of Selectmen's meeting to order. Item one, to approve the Board of Selectmen minutes of June 6, 2018 and July 27, 2018, which is a special meeting. Okay, a motion to approve? Recommend approval. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Can you get a motion to add a green use application for uh, Wolfstock? Make a motion we add that to the agenda. Second. Aye. Are all in favor say aye. 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 Um, item two, you need a motion to go into executive session and discuss pending tax appeals. We'll invite in attorney Perito to discuss. Motion. Make a motion we go into executive session. Second that. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
time, Jim. Okay. Hey, a motion to go back into regular session. Motion to return to regular session. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We're back in regular session. For the record, no votes were taken while in executive session. Can I get a motion to approve the <coughs> proposed tax settlement for uh, Kirkham Mutual Housing? Make a motion we approve the proposal. Second, aye. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Jim. Item three, to consider an if appropriate approval request from Fire Chief Thomas Mahoney to trade in two 2003 and one 2005 striker stair chairs for a trade in value of $3,600. We have uh, uh, Chief Mahoney was unable to make it tonight. We do have a letter uh, in our packets from him uh, with the appraisal price uh, <coughs> for these chairs. And I think this is the, the trade in value, and then they'll purchase some uh, new chairs, correct? Uh, correct. Chief, do you have any? Uh, yep. Jack, do you have any? Uh, Got to have these. The right. 2003, that means I bought them from them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll make a motion we approve. All right. Second that. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Item four to consider if appropriate. Approve a request from Otto Berger, lead tradesman, to waive the bid for the purchase of a 2016 Ford Transit van in the amount of $22,520. Otto. Yeah, I'm requesting the uh, waiver of the bid for uh, 2016 Ford Transit van for the $22,520. That's going to replace the uh, vehicle that had to come off the road about three months ago. Uh, there was a 2008, it was all routed out, and we're one vehicle down. The uh, vehicle will be purchased from uh, you know, Ford of Brantford. Uh, this will be the third one that we have gotten from there. And uh, it's good condition, low mileage. And we've had this, uh, <clears throat> went through our, our, our town mechanics, uh, went through the van yeah. as well, inspected it. Yeah, well it, it has been inspected by the town as yeah. well. All right. So and everything seems to be in good condition. So we've actually have purchased, as Otto said, this is our third transit van that we've had. We've had some luck. We've always bought them a couple of years old and uh, for the just using it in town. We've uh, realized some savings by going with a, a year or two year old vehicle to get good value. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion we approve. Good job, Otto. Second that. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Item five, to consider and if appropriate approve a request from Gary Zielinski, Highway Supervisor, to waive the bid for the purchase of catch basin cleaning services in the amount of $19.50 per basin. Gary? Yeah. Uh, requesting that we waive bid require to issue a purchase order to Shawvac Services to perform catch basin cleaning for approximately 2,000 catch basins townwide in the amount of $19.50 per basin. Uh, Shawvac is quoted $1.10 lower than their CROG bid of $20.60 in the past. So uh, actually it was lower than uh, even the lowest bidder at uh, Janet Sweeping at $19.99 per basin. So I think you negotiated this price last year. This was the, they offered to uh, hold that price for their next uh, going forward at $19.50 per basin. So I think we just requested at that. We're mandated under state uh, uh, waste, uh, stormwater permit to uh, clean out our catch basins annually. So. You're happy with the work they did last year? Yeah, yeah, satisfied. They respond quickly. I'll make a motion we approve. I second that motion. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Item six, to consider and if appropriate, abate the taxes on the following properties. Town of Brantford, 26 Church Street, bill number 2017-01000866, the amount of $4,946.14, 28 Church Street, bill number 
$1,000,867 in the amount of $1,784.28. That is the uh, town owned property uh, that we purchased. This was uh, adjacent to the community house project. Also, we have hospice. We do this annually. Uh, I'll just read the addresses in the dollar amount. That's right. 30 uh, Double Beach Road for $1,626.76. Double Beach Road for $257.76. 34A Double Beach Road, $2,053.50. 34 Double Beach Road, $1,832.96. 26 Double Beach Road, $1,526.52. 191 Short Beach Road for $3,055.90. And then the last statement is for Shoreline Community Church. This is on 9 Business Park Drive, 9-2, for $2,016.26. 9 Business Park Drive, Unit 91 for $2,400. $5.33, 9 Business Park Drive, Unit 9-3 for $1,520.78, 9 Business Park Drive, Unit 9-4 for $1,480.70. You can either break those up separately or if you want to make one motion to approve all of the abatements as read, we can do that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, correction as stated for 9 1, the uh, amount is for the full year of $4,810.66. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion we do it all at once. All right. I agree. Um, all right. And just a question. Yep. Um, does Jim see this coming? When we're doing the budget, does he already know? Like, yeah, well, we room? yes, we well, we do budget. Um, uh, you know, if we, we account for appeals and things of this right. nature okay. through our budget. So it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Actually, you know, I just want to state one correction for the record. I believe I said uh, we approved the board of selectmen minutes for the. July 27th, 2018 meeting. It was actually June 27th, 2018. Okay, <laughs> okay. thanks. Uh, okay, uh, item seven, reappointments. Cable Advisory Council, Margo Hardenberg, term to expire June 30th, 2020. Make a motion we approve. Second that. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Appointments, Cable Advisory Council, J.C. Wyatt to fill a vacancy, turn to expire June 30th, 2020. Make a motion we approve. Second that. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Item nine, green use, to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Shoreline Community Church for the use of the town green on Wednesday, October 31st, 2018, from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. to hold a Light the Night Halloween event. Make a motion we approve. Second that. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Don't forget this one. All right. Uh, again, a motion to approve the green use application for the animal shelter for the use of the town green to hold the annual Wolfstock on Saturday. August 11th, 2018, and approve an exemption pursuant to section 118-25 and allow animals on the town green. Make a motion we approve. August 11th? August 11th, That's yes. my birthday. Uh, Definitely approve that. Be there. All right. <laughs> We're doing it for your birthday. So Happy birthday, birthday, Joe. You have to get a dog, uh, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there, Jack. <laughs> All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Um, item 10 is adjournment, but do we have uh, any other business? Would I'll you like? Comment? I'll allow public comment. Yes, all right, come on. Good afternoon. 
afternoon. Afternoon. My name is Sandy Stoddard. I live at Seven High Island in the Thimbles. Uh, I'm starting in four weeks. I'm starting my 71st year out there. Um, but uh, we I, I was talking to the first selectman a while ago, along with Mr. Warner, uh, and we had nice discussions, and I liked where, where things were going. We had our Thimble Island Association meeting Sunday, and some of the niggling problems that are always vexing us every year are still there. And uh, frankly, we got talking about the meetings that we had with the first selectman, and we thought, well, maybe what we should do is see if we can engage the board of selectmen to help us not solve them, but sort of, you know, who do we talk to? Because we get runarounds, you know, we talk to this department and that department, and everyone goes, you know, pointing fingers kind of thing. So that's really pretty much what we're sort of starting a dialogue with. Uh, we're talking with Jamie. He was not really familiar with the Thimble Island Association. Uh, we had past first selectmen, of course, who were Quakers, so they didn't need, you know, we knew John and, and Unc. So anyway, so that's pretty much the purpose of why I'm here. And if it's okay, I'll get, I'll have Tracy Everson, the secretary, to come up and she's got more sort of details. But we're trying to be, you know, let's. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Tracy Everson. I'm a fourth generation Islander with a home on Governors. I'm also the secretary at the Thimble Islands Association. There are 74 homes in the Thimbles on 22 islands with an assessed property value of $48 million. As Islanders, we contribute approximately $1.4 million in revenue to the town of Branford. We're looking to work collaboratively with the town leaders to improve the village of Stony Creek. There are many competing interests in the summer months in a very small area. Limited parking has been an issue for over a century. We as taxpayers and seasonal residents compete for public parking. Stony Creek has become a draw for tourists with three tour boats that operate around the islands. They utilize town dock space at a cost, as I understand it, of $600 per boat a season. There's little space left for islanders to tie up a boat at a public dock when coming ashore, given the yokes on the docks and the competition for the limited space. We as representatives of the Thimble Island Association are asking to meet with the stakeholders at a community meeting on a date as yet to be determined with the Board of Selectmen, also perhaps the police and fire chiefs and members of the representative town meeting to discuss our concerns. With the town in the process of drafting a new plan of conservation and development, the timing could not be better. Our goal is to identify and find solutions. Perhaps the town would even consider creating a task force with all stakeholders in the village of Stony Creek, the Islanders, the Stony Creek Association, the tour boat operators, and the commercial interests, such as the fishermen and construction crews. Thank you for listening, and I'll give my comments, a copy of my comments to the clerk with my contact information. I'm also a Brantford resident, so I'm a dual taxpayer. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one uh, quick comment on that. Um, I did, you know, meet with a couple of the individuals as stated. Uh, I know the primary concern as stated was uh, our discussion center a lot around parking. Um, I believe the town did, uh, as we know, that the police commission, the traffic authority, oversees uh, parking restrictions, parking designated no parking, and I believe. Previously, they had done a, a study looking at that, and I was going to try to find that study. Uh, um, it was referenced to me by our town engineer uh, at the time that they did look at it. They did implement some of the things to try to maximize the allowable parking spaces. They said there may be some areas further down Thimble Island that could be, uh, you know, marked out for painting. Uh, however, she's, the, the recollection was that pretty much that general area around the dock down to the peach was pretty much maxed out for public parking. I know one of the other things that was uh, discussed is having um, <clears throat> resident parking only stickers down there. Um, you know, I, I know that's come up in uh, 
uh, before. Uh, I know the uh, previously the police commission uh, did not, you know, look favorably on doing that in certain areas because it becomes a a uh, enforcement issue uh, in looking at that, but. Certainly, with the amount of activity that's happening down there, I understand that, like you said, there are competing interests. Um, you mentioned the plan of conservation development. I believe it's tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. There's a meeting. I encourage you, if you haven't read the draft yet, it is available online. You can read the draft comments that are on there and, um, you know, perhaps provide, uh, you know, some uh, a testimony. Uh, if not, if you can't make it, you can still submit it. Uh, in writing, uh, it, the time may have. I think there was a deadline to it, but if you can get it to the town planner, uh, perhaps they can present those to the uh, commission, the steering committee that'll be reviewing it. Um, but it, the meeting is, uh, I believe, five o'clock. Is it here? Yeah, I, I it's believe in it's in that firehouse. Yeah, so here at five o'clock tomorrow. Thank you. Hello. First Selectman of Brantford. Um, you know me, my name is Ben Getch. Um, I'm here with this group tonight. Um, I'm also a third generation Thimble Islander from High Island. Um, one of the things that we discussed at the annual meeting this year was with some of the recent aquacultural development. Now, I've uh, expressed to you my views on this topic before. So in the interest of time, I won't go over it again. But um, I will say that uh, it, there are concerns coming now from multiple um, stakeholders, island residents, um, those that use the islands, um, about uh, some of this development. Um, I've, I believe that the state's purchase of the private shellfish and ground in Brantford's jurisdictional waters uh, should be challenged. I, I believe I've provided the town with um, the legal uh, theory that, that would accomplish that. Um, I know the town attorney had, had reviewed that. Um, I have spoken with him a number of times about it, um, but have never really received a, uh, a satisfactory answer. It's always just been kind of, oh, we're, we're looking into it or um, something to that effect. Uh, I would encourage the selectmen to uh, pursue this perhaps more vigorously now, um, as it will only create more complications in the future. Um, there are already a number of uh, these aquacultural installations now um, that have been permitted that are in around uh, very close, right up to the shores of some of these islands. Um, some of these permits were uh, granted without consultation from, from the town or uh, abutting landowners. And uh, they do provide, uh, they, they, they do uh, create perhaps navigational hazards or, or other things of concern. Um, but uh, this is something that um, I think as an association, the, the Thimble Island Association is, uh, is concerned about and is also uh, willing to engage the selectmen further on uh, if you are uh, so amenable to that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And uh, just to follow up on that, I, I believe we had a discussion. I did have uh, Attorney Cretella review the, what you had provided. I know you had some uh, discussions with them. Uh, at the time, we decided uh, it wasn't in the best interest of the town to engage the state in a lawsuit uh, over the per the property. Um, however, I think you also mentioned concerns that you just uh, uh, repeated tonight with the uh, the program that they have. I did have a conversation with a uh, representative from DEP, our aquaculture. Um, Dave Carey. Dave Carey, as well as in. Uh, uh, regarding uh, the issues and some of the things that you brought to light, um, he, I believe it was Stonington, it was further down the shoreline, they had a, uh, uh, UConn did a presentation of in their, what their program is going to be in that area and what they're trying to do, and uh, they shared that uh, with me, uh, and I asked perhaps they can do a, uh, is that it, time over? <laughs> no. uh, you're just telling it. Um, My birthday but, again. <laughs> but uh, I, I plan on inviting them to town uh, and have a public meeting where they can then explain uh, what their vision is and their use and uh, uh, for the um, 
the shellfish beds that they now own. Well, so, it, it's not just a matter of, of the... Uh, ben, do you mind just coming up here because oh, the yeah. TV won't pick you up? Yeah. For the I don't think it's just a matter of uh, what their plans are. Um, I, I believe that should be uh, out in the open and in the public. Um, but it's also a matter of the fact that um, there is a statute that protects Brantford um, from uh, those that would seek to control shellfish grounds without paying taxes. Um, now, yes, the state is exempt from paying taxes in the town of Brantford, but uh, the statute says very clearly, if no taxes are paid, then it will shall revert back to the town of Brantford. Um, the state should not be allowed to move into Brantford's jurisdictional waters and play uh, essentially real estate broker here. Um, this is, these are near shore uh, interests that were granted under the original jurisdiction of this town. And it is a complete uh, disrespect to the town of Brantford, its jurisdictional rights for, us, for the town to let this kind of encroachment into uh, its municipal waters to stand. Um, that's not to say this program shouldn't happen. Perhaps there are many merits to this program and uh, their plans maybe have a, a place uh, that they could fit into our community. But um, I do believe that that program, uh, whatever it is, should be uh, administered uh, with Brantford's interests in mind. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. All right, thanks. Any other comments? All right. Well, thank you. Um, we can keep, look forward to continuing the dialogue. Yeah. Good evening. Lawrence Warner uh, from Massachusetts and Dogfish Island. Uh, one item that we have expressed some concern about, and I have mentioned to you about this, Jamie, was tying up boats. There's an area to the, as you drive out on the Stony Creek dock on the right, if the furthest dock out is sort of allocated to tour boats. The second dock is mixed with a fire boat. The second two docks are to be short-term tie-up. Uh, residents load, unload, things like that. Uh, the problem we've had is people that don't have a slip or something else decide that they're going to use this as their tie-up place, meaning overnight they might leave on Sunday, leave their boat there until the following weekend. This makes it very difficult for islanders to load, unload, pick up passengers, things like that. Um, it is posted. And there are even fines posted. And what I'm hoping is uh, some of our members have asked and told that it's an ordinance, but we don't enforce it. And I'm trying to figure out why isn't it enforced when the penalties are already posted on the sign. I've talked to the, I don't know what their actual description is, but I will call them police assistants meter maids, I don't know what, but they're on the Stony Creek dock, I believe seven days a week. And I've asked them about it. And they said they've ticketed boats and the police department said, don't do that. So we're all a bit confused about this and trying to figure out how to get to the bottom of this because it's already posted. I mean, this is something just, how do we get it enforced? Yeah, um, right, and we did increase, you know, as we talked, added some additional signage painted on the uh, last season trying to, I know that was an issue. I believe they did ticket some boats, but I can certainly follow up with the, uh, uh, the p police chief and um, as far as, you know, what the policy is within the department. There's an ordinance there. If it's not being followed, um, you know, I can certainly look into that further. Well, it would be greatly appreciated because our season is very short, as you know. No. And so for what we do pay in taxes and things, it would be nice to get. I mean, some of these things that we're hoping for might be very long distant. But this one, I would think, would be a very simple, easy-to-address type item. 
I mean, uh, the ticketing agents, whoever they are, could very easily say eight o'clock in the morning, the boat's there, two in the afternoon, the boat's still there, he gets a ticket, whatever it might be. I mean, everything is in place, so it would just be a case of enforcement. Right. And that's what we're kind of looking for. Right. Um, right. Lots of other things, but this is the one I did for today. Right. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I just have a quick thing to say. My name's Cindy Tower, and I live in Branford. And um, my family has had a cottage since the 60s on Governor's Island that they bought for $5,000, which I just thought I should just tell you because it's so shocking how times have changed. But one statistic you might not be aware of is that the 11 houses on Governor's Island, 15 people of the have houses in Branford from that one island alone and they go back and forth to go to stop and shop and then you have to run home and mow the lawn in Branford so the amount of islanders actually are becoming Branford people as well and that and this is a new uh, demographic there's a real connection and I and it's growing and that's something I just th wasn't sure you knew about I wanted to mention for the doc stuff thank you right, yeah. thank you all right. Any other comments? All right. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. And I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BranfordTV.org.